Cassandra is a software, right? It needs to bind. Bind to what? The IP address of the dabba. Makes sense. So when I'm installing Cassandra in this dabba, right? Cassandra, when it starts, has to bind with the IP address of this dabba and the port. Makes sense. That is the first configuration we'll do. Only four items I'm requesting you guys to do so that at least at the minimum, you are aware. You got that at the minimum. So the IP address of the dabba that each one of you have, this is what you have. Make sense? All right. Now I'm going to type something in uh, Etherpad. Please take a look at this. And then you'll have to make an appropriate change before you hit enter in your local machine. Make sense? The square brackets needs to be removed. Right. So what you're going to do, let's assume, can you tell me your IP address, please? Dot 22 dot 194 would be replaced in those two last places. You will remove the square brackets. Are you with me? So what you need to do is now you got the command right. Make sense. Now we will do it in the right place. So please change the directory to slash opt Apache Cassandra hit tab tab finish. You all know that. So CD space slash opt slash Apache hit tab. It will finish it for you. And then slash conf. C-O-N-F, CONF. Do you know this creature by the name Analyst? This creature's attributes, we talked about attributes, is very similar to that of a developer. Can you just create a folder? What does it entail? MKDIR folder name. You come back after one hour, the developer and the creature is still busy. Don't know what. Got that? So analyst, analyst, uh, analysts and developers, same breed. Attributes are exactly the same. I still didn't understand what was that big discussion happening all over the place. I just asked you to redo a global replace. If there are questions, you please tell me. We will sort it out. Let also others enjoy. Make sense? I have three more replaces. Got that? In the same folder. Those things, fortunately, you don't have to do anything. Just copy and paste and you will be done. Right? Fortunately. All right. Next. So IP address is done. Thankfully, finally, we are done. Next, what we are going to do is, please don't do anything yet. Here also, you'll have to do exactly the same replacement of your IP address. Please make sure the square brackets are not there. So it might be 172.31. Let's say 23. Whatever. Doesn't matter. But it's got to be exactly the same that you did the last time around. Friends, are we clear on this? Actually, I'm going to get rid of the square brackets in any case. Friends, please don't make a mistake. Please do not make a mistake. These are hard things to fix. Of course, you can always search for this and go back, but that's up. It's okay. No matter. We remember we said that these two could potentially be in rack one. These two could be in rack two, something like that. So that's what we are specifying. Right, these configuration files doesn't matter. This is not of interest for you. This is not a Cassandra deep dive. This is like Cassandra usage and understanding enough so that you know if somebody throws Cassandra at you, you know how to read from it and how it behaves. That's the focus. Are you with me? So that's what we are trying to specify here. Are we done with this copy paste? Yep. By the way, 3.11 is the latest build. The sub build is currently two. You are currently using zero. Right. Oh, you're using one. So you're just one sub build old, which is like three, four months. So you're perfectly good here. Okay. By the way, basic configuration is complete. Now it's time for us to start Cassandra. Now, what I want you guys is to fire this command and then just be patient. Take your hands off the keyboard and watch what's happening on the console because there is a question coming up. The command to be written is as follows. Is there a specific compatibility to Java? Yeah, sorry, uh, to Cassandra? The answer to that question is yes. Cassandra needs minimum uh, JDK 8. And any build above what the documentation says 50 is good to go. Right, currently the latest build of Java is 172, I think. The sub build. Akshat, confirm karo yaar. No, no, I was asking. If you know at the top of the mind, you let me know. It's 180. That's the latest. Okay, so anything above 40 should be okay. 40 or 50 should be okay. Good. Time for us to start Cassandra as follows. That's it. And don't do anything. Watch the screen very closely. Watch the screen very closely. And do you see some beautiful patterns building up? I'm going to go at the back of the room just so that I can see everybody's console. 
Yeah, exactly. Those are the tokens. That's basically your lookup. Right? That's your lookup. It's essentially saying instead of managing this large token, it internally does a little bit of optimization to have smaller token ranges. That's what you see there. The, for those who are having a little bit of a trouble in terms of the find and replace, the way set works is, it's just a replace capability. All right, you look for a particular token, in this case, mod underscore something, right? Mod stands for modify, IP address, mod seed list, etc. Equal to with the value, you remember the IP address. Now, in case you have replaced it with anything else, maybe a wrong IP address or a wrong string, whatever it is, that mod hyphen whatever is gone. That string has been replaced. You get that? Are you with me? So take for example, if the original string was mod underscore IP underscore address. And if this has been replaced with, let's say a square bracket 170, uh, two dot um, whatever thirteen dot eight dot sixty five. If this is how it has been replaced, you cannot do this replace again. So what you'll have to do, you'll have to modify your set command and use this as the replace string. Got that? And then you say equal to whatever the right IP address is because this is what you want to replace. Are you getting this? Yeah. So in case you have done an incorrect replacement, you have to use the wrong replacement as on the left hand side. You have to get rid of this. Got what I'm saying? Because this has been replaced with this one. You're not going to find it in this string. Get it? Good. So for those who are going to do this modification, keep continue, continue to do so. For others, let's proceed. If you're saying, uh, what is that? Uh, no gossip backlog protocol, hit enter, you'll get the prompt. Any Linux environment, you are going to get this particular Cassandra running in the foreground. Now, I want to show you something really fun and interesting. Right, which will basically prove that Cassandra supports only two operations, which is get and put. Okay, 